Last lesson, we looked at the different types of erosion. Now we're going to look at uh, what factors affect the rate of erosion and transport and deposition in a river's course. The first factor I'm going to look at in terms of uh, affecting a river's erosion and transport um, capabilities is rainfall. So if you look at this um, storm hydrograph, uh, this was for a um, an incident that happened in Boscast in 2004. Um, we can see on this hydrograph that in a space of just two hours, we have a significant amount of rainfall um, falling in this area. We're looking up here in, in just um, kind of half an hour, we have over kind of 30 millimetres. Overall, there's about 77 millimetres falling in this two hours, which is the same amount of rain as the whole of August. So that's a lot of rain falling. Um, obviously, if a river has that amount of water falling in it, the first thing we get is if um, you know we get high rainfall, then we get uh, the discharge rapidly increases. And we can see that on our hydrograph here. So in this area here, that we've got um, lots and lots of rain, 77 millimetres, as I said, and the discharge rapidly increases from about 20 cumex here to suddenly 100 cumex in the space of under three hours. So it's a rapid increase in the, in the amount of discharge. So if we get that kind of discharge, we, we get higher erosion and more transportation. And the main reason why we get um, this is simply because we get um, more energy in the river. The river has more energy and therefore those processes like abrasion and hydraulic action can happen because the, the water has more energy to do those activities. The same with transportation. If we've got um, a larger amount of discharge, a larger amount of water, it has more energy to be able to do those kind of processes. So rainfall, higher rainfall leads to higher discharge, which leads to higher energy, which leads to higher erosion and transportation. Looking at how that looks in real life, so we looked at the storm hydrograph of Boz Castle. This was what actually happened. As we can see on the right, this was what the river normally looks like. Um, it's a, a relatively narrow channel, but when they had all of that rainfall in a short period of time, we can see that it kind of eroded um, its banks and, and burst its banks and, and we had wide scale flooding. It's what we called um, actually a flash flood. Um, and this was Boz Castle in 2004. It's a really rare event, um, but we, this is an extreme example, but it shows you that once a river has a lot more discharge, it can erode, and in the in the worst examples, it can break its banks completely, completely, and and form a whole new channel. Here's a slightly less extreme version, but again, uh, this is where the discharge of the river has increased rapidly, and it is eroded uh, through the side of the bank here. So again, rainfall leading to higher discharge, higher energy, more erosion and transportation. The next factor could, to consider that affects um, erosion and transportation and deposition rates uh, would be the geology. Geology is, is the structure of the rock. Um, so as we can see here, there's been quite a lot of erosion on the side of this river. It's a very steep river cliff. Um, and the reason why that is, is to do the geology. This is a clay bank and the clay is um, softer rock and it's a more susceptible to erosion. So if we have softer rock, um, then we have higher erosion. So example, a clay is an example of something that is very soft and susceptible to water. But if we had something that was like granite, it's very hard and therefore um, it's less likely to erode. So if we do have um, uh, softer rocks on the side or on the base of the river, then we're going to get higher erosion rates and therefore more of that material is going to be transported in the bed load. So the last thing we want to talk about in terms of how it affects the erosion and transportation and deposition of a river is the gradient. And the gradient 
simply refers to how steep something is. And in this case, uh, we want to know how steep the riverbed is. So, if we look in this top section near the source, the river um, is, is very, very steep. So in this upper course, we have a, very, a steep gradient. But by the time we, we get down to um, the mouth, which is in this section, it's very gentle. And so where we get um, a steep gradient, what we get is we get um, gravity is pulling down on that water. And so it's giving it a lot of energy and it's speeding it up. And therefore, erosion is dominant here. And I'm going to talk about the different types of erosion and, and what effect they have on the river in another um, video. But just all you need to know is that the gradient is steep and that erosion is dominant because gravity is, you know, gravity has got a really, it's a real powerful act and it's pulling down on the water. Um, and so that is eroding into the bed. Um, it would also mean when you've got kind of a steep a gradient, you're going to get lots of transportation as well. And so if we go for this middle section, the gradient isn't as steep, but it's still um, got a slight angle on it. And therefore, we're going to still get in this section transportation um, and um, some erosion, but less than we did in this first section in the upper course where it was steep. So by the time we get down to the mouth where it's very, very gentle in terms of the slope of the riverbed. Um, gravity isn't pulling down as fast and therefore there's less energy to erode. And so we get deposition happening in this area. So over the course of river from source to mouth, the gradient will change and that will affect the process that is dominant. So when we have gentle slopes, um, we have deposition and when we have steep slopes, we have erosion and more transportation.